with experience, I think we come to realize that uh, we uh, make the music of justice with the symphony of, of everybody else, with our court reporters and our court officers and our clerks and our court attorneys and all of the many people who are so good. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking <coughs> excellence. And that is a true, true, uh, true words of wisdom that apply not only to the judges we honor today, but to all of you for what you provide to humanity. Thank you. I could always count on Sherry to come to the table with energy, with vision, with commitment, with a lot of humor, and a lot of hard work to get done what we needed to do. Whether it was 21C Collaborative, multi-agency care, system of care, partnership for safe and healthy youth, Rockland County Raise the Age initiatives, police and youth initiatives, mentorship programs, the Rockland County Pride Center, Judge Eisenpress was all in, and I emphasize all in. Instrumental in developing supportive, creative programs and services to improve the outcome for children and to reduce involvement in the juvenile and criminal system here in Rockland County. She actively participated in ongoing development of services for youth and families that were embedded in research-based best practices with a focus on ensuring safety for our community and for our families. Her ability to listen, and I mean truly listen, think, plan, has literally saved many families as they are navigating very turbulent times in their lives. In her role as family court judge, Sherry Eisen Press uses her heart every day in every case. Um, please join me in acknowledging uh, Judge Eisen Press, a distinguished woman leader in North Carolina. I, Sherry L. Eisenpress. I, Sherry L. Eisenpress. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge my duties. And that I will faithfully discharge my duties. As Rockland County Family Court Judge. As Rockland County Family Court Judge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. And it recently struck me, if all of this has been a stressful and challenging time for us as a nation and as a community and as intact and stable families, how much more challenging must this all be for those who have personal, economic, and familial turmoil happening at the same time. So while each and every one of us have had to navigate some challenging times, for some families, these external events only contributed to an overwhelming family situation and brought them to their breaking point. And that is when we see them in family court. And we have seen those challenges explode over the last 10 years as I've sat in this court. Domestic violence has increased. Bankruptcies and foreclosures have soared. Youth crime has started creeping up after a sharp decline. Families were torn apart by the opioid crisis, by COVID, job losses, grief, insecurity about the state of the world, this country, and civil rights, and by political disagreements, and by vaccines and masks. Mental health issues also exploded, but the resources to make sure that our citizens, especially our youth, can get the treatment they need has been hard to come by. Knowing all of this and what the families that appear before me are struggling with, I am humbled every day when I put on these robes. I try my best to help people resolve their disputes, get them the help they need if possible, and ultimately, failing that, to decide the cases in front of me in the fairest, most equitable way possible <coughs> in accordance with the law and where kids are involved in the best interest of those children. And outside the courtroom, I work hard to ensure that everyone has access to an efficient, fair, and unbiased hearing on their matters. To that end, I've been involved with various community partners in the push as um, Judge Richardson Mendelson and uh, Dr. Marcico referred to, the Raise the Age initiative, which raised the age of criminal responsibility 
for youth um, in accordance with the science uh, that indicates that such a, a plan makes sense and in the hopes that we can achieve better outcomes for these young people that come before us. To create a countywide mentoring program for youth at risk, which has been successfully operating for several years now in partnership with BOCES, with the Pride Center, with MHA, among others, and with the goal of keeping kids in school and out of the court system. I've been very involved in the Partnership for Safe Youth, which was created by a multi-agency collaboration spearheaded by Judge Zugabe, who's sick, he says, Dr. Marcelico, <laughs> DSS, probation, and others, who created a space where representatives of all of these agencies can be co-located and work as a coordinated team. Kind of a one-stop shop for families with struggling youth so they can receive care and assistance across systems in one place. I've likewise been involved in other court improvement projects and I'm currently hard at work with another group of local organizations who've partnered with the court, PCS, the Center for Safety and Change, and the Center for Court Innovation, uh, to implement the $500,000 grant we applied for and received to open a domestic, criminal vi a domestic violence criminal hub court. Now many of you know these last few years I've been sitting in a civil Supreme Court part as opposed to family court. As a result, my family court docket has lessened, but I continue to preside over the integrated domestic violence part and the youth part, thus allowing me to continue to do the work I was doing in family court just in a different context. And I continue to partner with many local agencies, organizations, elected officials, and community leaders, many of you are here today, and thank you, uh, to address on a larger scale some of the issues we see impacting those families who appear before us in family court. I've learned a lot over these past 10 years. I've made mistakes, which the appellate division has been happy to point out on a couple of occasions. <laughs> I have been challenged. <laughs> not you necessarily. <laughs> I have been challenged in ways I could not have imagined before taking the bench, and I have spent many sleepless and sometimes even tearful nights thinking about some of my more challenging or heart-wrenching cases. And of course, many hours trying to figure out what went wrong when a kid we were trying to help or a litigant overdoses or commits a terrible crime or loses or takes their lives. I take this work seriously and I strive to always be better. I love this job, like Bob. It's a great job and I can't think of anything more professionally satisfying <coughs> than when a kid who has appeared before me as a defendant comes and tells me they've graduated from high school or college or got a job or stopped using drugs or when I am at least able to help put to rest or resolve some of the more trouble, troubling issues impacting a family. I'm also very proud of the work I've done in the community as well as in the court itself. And I'm very thankful for the partners I've had in these undertakings and the many friends I've made along the way. One of the things I love most about Rockland County and one of the reasons I moved here from New York City 25 years ago is its diversity. And I'm happy to say that in this election cycle, I again received support from all across the county, from all different communities, and across political lines. I'm thankful for that and for having been given an opportunity to continue this work over the next 10 years in whatever form that work takes. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the support of a different kind from family and friends, my wife, Wasu, and son, Jaden, who remind me regularly that I am not a judge at home, <laughs> my extended family around the country, and my large family of good friends, who are also some of you I see here today. Although I did excuse my 16-year-old from coming. He said he had a lot to do. He's got a busier schedule than I do. <clears throat> so I want to just say thank you for coming, and love to you all. <laughs>